Hi everyone, welcome to grade 12 math session. I hope we're gonna have an awesome session today. And yes, we're still on differential calculus. So just to make sure that everyone is in the right session, this is the math session for grade 12. And my name is Batseva, Batseva Mkhavani. And I'm your math teacher, okay? So just please note down my email address. It's my name, Batseva, and surname Mkhavani at gmail.com. So in case if you have questions after the session, then you can send me an email. And today, okay, so there are a few things that you need to note down. So during the session, just make sure that you are on mute, but then you can only hear me, your teacher. So you're on mute and your videos are off so make sure that you are on mute and videos are off and because this is a learning session please don't post videos which are not related to math so we're not going to be having videos and we're just going to focus on the powerpoint slides that I'm sharing with you guys. So please make sure that you are on mute and your videos are off. And if you have questions, you can ask me at the end of the session. And then if you can't, or if I don't manage to answer your question during our session, then you can send me an email. So you have two options either to ask me a question at the end of the slides or you can send me an email and then we only ask math related questions in our sessions so we only do a math so unfortunately for today we had to switch off the the, the chats option because there's a lot of um what can I say, people hacking into our system. So there's people sending messages which are not related to our content. So for today, or just until I finish my slides, the chats will be off. And then if you have questions, I'll unmute you guys at the end. So just to go back. So my email, it's my name, Batseva. So it's B double A T S E B A Nkavani N K G A B A N E at Gmail dot com. So it's my name. And say name, no space, name and say name at gmail.com. And yes, if you see anything, let's say there's something in the chat that's not related to what we're doing, please just ignore it. Just focus on everything that's math related. So continuing from what we did yesterday. So at the end of this lesson, you'll be able to calculate the slope, which is the gradient. So the slope and equation of a tangent. Remember a tangent is a line. So you'll be able to calculate the slope and equation of a tangent to a curve. So we're still working on limits. So yesterday I gave you a homework. Remember that? So we're gonna do problems from the homework so we're gonna go through the homework and see how we were supposed to do it and then if you still have questions then you can ask me at the end of the session so let's say your 
supposed to determine the gradient. So you're supposed to determine the gradient and this is your function. So our function is k at x, which is negative x cubed plus 2x plus 1. And then we are given one point. Okay. So we still continue from what we did yesterday. So what you would need to do is to write down your gradient formula because we are focusing on a specific point. Remember that. So this is our gradient at a point. We select that. So this is gradient at a point. Because between two points, it would be y2 would be our change in y over change in x, which is y2 minus y1 divided by x minus x1. But then even if we're given at a point on a curve, we use this formula, okay? So now after writing your formula, you need to identify what is your k, a plus h, and your k at a. Remember, this simply means that you're going to plug in where you see in, in the place of x, you're just going to replace with a plus h and then continuing. Okay. So, how we determine our k at a plus h is by, remember, we know that our a represents the value of x. So, we can just start by saying, okay my a or my x is one and then you substitute that in your equation so don't be confused about whether it's k of x or k at one and then you substitute that into your equation and then you also do the same thing. So you start, you can start with either k a plus h or the other one. It doesn't matter. Depends on what you want to start with. So then now we find that our k at a is 2. And then our k at a plus h, which is 1 plus h, is that. So remember, you can also start by saying k at x plus h, and then you solve, and then at the end, you substitute with one. It depends on how you want to do it. So there's no only one method for solving a problem. So it depends on how you want to solve it, but then as long as it's mathematically correct. Okay. And then now that we have our k at a plus h and k at h, we can substitute into our equation. And then we substitute our k at one plus h from the previous slide. And we also substitute our k at y. And then if you look at what we're trying to do, we're trying to eliminate the h from the denominator because division by zero will give us an undefined solution. So we actually want to remove this h from the denominator. So we want to get rid of this h so that we can use our limit. So just revise your simplifying knowledge, your factorization and all that. Okay, so remember, I'll take questions at the end of the lesson. <clears throat> and then, now you simplify. Remember, there's a positive two, and that, if you want to know where that two disappeared to. So this two will actually cancel the other two. 
So you'll remain with that. And then in this case, you have negative H minus three H squared minus H cubed. And you can see that you can make your H a common factor. And then if you make H your common factor, you'll have this case. So to check if what you did is right, you check, okay, what is H times negative one? It's H. What is H times negative three H? It's negative three H squared. And then what is h times negative h squared is that. So that's how you check if what you did here is correct. And after that, you cancel your h and then you may return the denominator. And then you remain with this equation. And then if you simply Now you can use your limit. So if you substitute H into this, you'll get zero. And then if you substitute zero into that, you'll get zero. So that will also disappear. So this will also be zero. And this will also be zero. And then you remain with negative one. Okay, and then you write your final answer. So we're saying the gradient of our function at this point is negative one. So our gradient at this point, specifically at this point is one. So if you were to try at a different point, you would get a different answer. Okay. Then this was then we can go back to your question so please 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 note down the exercise number so note down and your question so please note it down so note down the problem number because if i keep muting and unmuting and then it's not gonna work okay so we find in the tangent at a point and this is our function Okay, to find the gradient, we still do our normal equation. And then we substitute. <clears throat> In the place of x, you place x plus h. So you place x plus h. And then minus your original term. Remember, you can do it separately and not plug it in immediately. It's your choice. But then, do you remember how to solve fractions? When you solve fractions, you would say the denominator multiply by, remember, you can use any method. Oh, and then the denominator multiplied by that one, and then you multiply the the denominator. So this is what you will have. So you'll have three multiplied by x 
minus 3 multiplied by x plus h divided by x multiplied by x plus h. Please revise how to add fractions with different denominators. Please just revise that. And then after that, this h, you can simply multiply the whole term with it. So that's why you have this h here. So you can simply say, oh, multiply by 1 over h, which is this h. So this h is the same as, so this h is simply this h. Okay. Then we simplify the numerator. So you'll have three times x, which is this three x. So, and then minus negative three times that, this negative three times positive is negative three h. And then if you look at that, this, 3x minus 3x is 0, and then you'll remain with that. And then you'll have minus 3h, and then this h will cancel that. Simplifying, you'll remain with that. But then we want the gradient at this point. So you need to substitute at the end. So at x equals to a, so in the place of your general equation, you substitute your value of x. And then now <clears throat> we are asked to determine the equation of the tangent. So in this case, we need to find the gradient and an equation for that tangent. So we need to determine two things. So it's basically revision of limits and what we've done in the previous years, okay? So we write our equation again, we substitute our function into the equation or uh, everywhere. So you can even put a bracket so that you don't get confused. So you can even put a bracket here. And there. So that you can see that it's your two terms, okay? And then this one is simply so this, you can even expand it to x plus So you can have x plus h, x plus H X plus H. Yes, so it's the same as this one. So you have x plus h multiplied by x plus h. Then you have to say x times x, x times h, x times h, h times h. Then you remain with this. Or you can simply just say x squared, x times that times that, depending on which method works for you. But then after simplifying, you'll have this. And then this is simplifying that term and then negative times positive negative times positive you have the term and then after that you look at the like terms so this will cancel that 
there's only two one two x plus h and then you have your three h in your x squared because this one cancels that one and then afterwards you have your limit as h and then you're still gonna find common factor h simplify then you get that but then you want the gradient remember we are given a point which is x equals to one so we say at x equals to negative one we substitute our value of negative one to get the gradient and two times negative one is negative two plus three is one and then this one we simply just checking okay at a point x equals to negative one what is my value of y and this is how you get it so at this point you have a value of negative one for x and your y is negative two because remember you need a point a coordinate and your gradient to calculate an equation so revision still remember this equation so now you can easily substitute your value of y which is negative two and your corresponding value of x which is negative one and then after you substitute negative this is very important negative times negative is positive and then you get your equation so this is the equation of your tangent okay so the equation of the tangent to the curve is y equals to z so it's the tangent at this point if you were to find at a different point then you would have a different answer okay so and like i said these are the links that i use i use your siavula textbook for examples so i use your uh, the siavula textbook and then i also use so when we do previous papers they'll be from the department of education so i go to the website and then because it's very important that you do question papers for practice so that you know the type of questions you will get okay i will share your the the, the links to the <clears throat> questions so that is all for today and then you can if you want to watch the video for today's session you can easily go to our website africa team gigs and then go to playlist and look for our session so you will have a youtube link where you can access today's session if it's your first session today and you missed the other section and then you can also go through the playlist to look at the previous sessions for limits just to have an overview of how limits work so you can go through our social media pages also to look on for updates and one other important thing our session will be at 13 hours so from tomorrow we're gonna have our session at one. So we're gonna have our session at one instead of 12. So from tomorrow, from tomorrow, we're gonna have our session at one. So just look out for that and make sure we are in the correct slot. Okay, so I'm just gonna go through no the timetable for grade 12 is gonna change from tomorrow so all the classes for grade 12 will be swapped but then we're gonna share that with you i'm just sharing for maths so maths will be at 
1. So our math session will be at 1. Okay. So if you have a question, let's ask Sibusiso to help us. Busiso? Yes, ma'am. I'm here. Yes. Okay. I think now I can. Yeah, we can allow them to ask number, the exercise number. Okay, I just uh, allow them to unmute themselves when they have questions. Okay. I think you have um you have one student with a question. Uh, cause I'm not seeing. From now you said it's not showing. Yeah, no. Did is... they raise their hand or you can unmute them? For me, yeah, please. You can unmute themselves now. Okay. Okay, guys. If you have a question, remember one person at a time. Then. And remember to refer to the exercise. Hi, ma'am. Hello. Could you please go back to the answer of exercise one? Okay, exercise one. Mm -mm. Okay, wait, wait. My PowerPoint is a bit slow today. So for the first one, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Mm. My computer is a bit. So this one. Yes. Okay. So which part do you need help with? So no, remember. I mean, mm hmm. You are saying. Uh, I didn't get like get to copy the la the final answer. You don't understand. No, I don't understand. I just want to see the final answer. You, I can hear you. So, which part of which? Okay, maybe let me ask you. Which step do you need me to go through again? No, ma'am, it's fine. I just needed to copy down the final answer. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. But then do you understand how we worked it out? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I think it's either an example or an exercise in the Siavula textbook. But remember, you can, even when you start the question, you can, in the place of A, you can replace it with X. And then you work it out and then you only plug in the negative, your value of X at the end. Do you understand? Yes. Yeah, so either way, the best method that works for you, do that. Because with this question, they substituted from, they substituted the value of um, X from the beginning. So, yeah. Okay. So let me check maybe in the chat if someone had a question because there was someone who do, 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 do. okay there was 
Tobani. Okay, they're not here. Do you guys understand or do you need me to go through? There's one more person. Oh, with the hands up. I hope I'm pronouncing your name. Is it Jadida? Hello? Jadida. Do you still have a question? Because I unmuted you. So do you still have a question? Because I see you raised your hand. OK. OK. Jadida? Okay, okay, Jadida is sorted. And then there's Jonathan. Let me try to unmute you. Oh, I can't see Jonathan. Uh, Busiso. Busiso? Yes, can you see? There's a Jonathan Kirk. Can you see him on the list? Yes. Oh, yeah. Found him. Let me unmute. Okay, Jonathan. Yes. Oh yes. Okay. We, uh, you asking? Uh, okay, ma'am. When you ask mm -hmm. to find the gradient an equation, right? Do we necessarily mm -hmm. have to use these principles, or do you only use them when told to? It, it, it will depend on the question. From okay, from what I've seen in your question papers. Usually when they ask um, the first principle, they just want to see if you can use it. So it's usually also, five or six marks. Hello? Okay, but then otherwise we can use the diff the rules, then we get to the same answer, right? Yes, because you want to know if you can use the differentiation, isn't it? Like finding the derivative. Yes, yes. Because yes. yes. we're still going to get to that. Because remember, oh. limits, yes. So limits form basis of the derivative. So tomorrow we're going to start with uh, the derivative, but then we're going to start with the derivative from first principles, which is where you use your limit. And then afterwards, we're going to do the rules of derivatives. OK, thank you, ma'am. OK, it's a pleasure. And then, okay. But then guys, you still need to know how to use um, limits. Cause when you find the derivative from first principles, you need to use, um, you need to use limits. But as much as you know other rules, if they are specific about the rule and they want you to use limits, you need to use limits. Oh, okay. Ma'am? Yes? Ma'am, I have a question on exercise one, the second step. Uh, the second step, okay. Let me go back to that. Okay, the second step. Yes, ma'am. This last mm -hmm. part. Ma'am, I want to know how you get, you got this cubed, this negative um, bracket one plus h cubed. 
You mean, uh, let me try to highlight. You mean this one? Uh, yeah, well, ma'am. Okay, remember, we trying to find, <clears throat> this is our equation, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. So, in the place of A, that's why I was saying A is actually X, because someone else could have written this as K at X plus H minus K at X divided by H. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So in the place of X or A, so that's mm -hmm. why we said let A equals to one. So you easily just substitute that value that you're given because you're looking for the gradient at that point. Then you substitute that one here. Mm -hmm. And then when you go back to your function, remember this represents your function, but then everywhere where there's a X, you replace with your X plus H, with your A plus H. In this case, our A plus H is one plus H. So you will have one plus H cubed. Can you oh. see that? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's just substituting back into the function. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Okay, it's a pleasure. Okay, we still have six more minutes for questions. Remember, if you, if you, Get to or you shy to ask a question now, just send me an email. So send me an email and ask me the question related to what we are doing. So tomorrow we'll start with derivatives from first principle so that we have that five or six marks for the exam because it usually is like five or six marks in most papers. It could be more or less, but then it's good to know how to use the method so that you don't look for math. Okay. So, uh, I think, uh, Uh, Busi, so do you see anyone else who has a question? I think Kyle wants to ask something, but I'm, I don't see him on my list anymore. Hello, ma'am. Yes, can you please unmute Kyle? Because I think he, Kyle Henry. I don't see any, I think he has a question. Oh. Okay, ma'am, I think now you are talking to Zimisele. Oh, okay, so you just admitted Simisel. Yes, Simisel can. Talk. Okay, okay. Simisel. Hello, ma'am. Yes. Hello. You yes, oh. I can hear you, Simisel. Okay, I just mm -hmm. want to ask one thing. Mm -hmm. How do you know? Uh, you have to let a to be equal to one. Okay, remember, this is one way of solving the problem. Ne? Okay. That's why I said someone else could have started by saying in this equation, you can write x plus h. Because remember, what's inside here? It's your. Did you see how we derived the equation yesterday? No, I'm new. I'm new here. Oh, okay. But then with other textbooks, they use the value here as x plus h. Have you seen that? It's my first time on this topic. Oh, okay, okay. So the value of a just simply represents the value of x. Of x, oh, okay. Yeah. So with some textbooks, like if you go through other textbooks, you'll find that they have k at x plus h minus k at x divided by h. And then before substituting, remember we are finding the gradient at a point on a curve. Because 
Do you still remember that if you have a straight line, let me show you mm, something previous. So let's say you had a straight line. So let's say you had a function. in x yes. but then yes. if you have a function like this let's say you have ooh, let's say you have a parabola the gradient on this curve changes not like with the straight line with a straight line if you choose any two points your gradient will be the same isn't it but then with a parabola, you have to show yes, a sir. point. Yes. So, but then with a the parabola, the gradient changes. So that's why you have to use this equation. Oh, so just, okay. yeah, just, just try to find the, um, the video from yesterday and see how we derived this equation and then it will make sense. But this A is simply the value of X. So X. that's why okay. we just substituted. Okay, so how, how can I get those videos? So you go to our website, Africa Teen Geeks. Yes, ma'am. And then you go to playlist. There's a link with a playlist and then it has all the videos. Oh, okay, ma'am. Okay. Thank you so much, ma'am. Yeah. Okay, it's a pleasure. Okay. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, we can take uh, one last question and then they can send me an email. Okay, you already Is there someone... but I don't see any other raised hand here. Okay, I think I think the one for Jadida is sorted, unless it shares another question. And it's showing that uh, okay. So I think everyone is sorted, guys. Remember, if you have a question. please send an email. This is my email address. It's my name, Batseva Nkhavani. So B-A-A-T-S-E-B-A Nkhavani at gmail.com. So if you have questions after the session, you can send me an email. So please just send me an email. And then if you need the videos from the previous sessions, you can just go to our website, Africa Teen Geeks, and then there's a playlist with all the videos from, even from the teacher who was teaching you before me, Gretchen. So there's also, <clears throat> his videos on that link. So just go through, if you missed sessions, you can go through that so that you can keep up with what we have done so far. And then remember tomorrow our session is at one. Tomorrow our session is at one. So your timetable is gonna change tomorrow. 
So tomorrow, from tomorrow going forward, we'll be doing math at one. So we'll meet at one tomorrow. Okay.